Is it cheaper to rent or buy in the US? Well, the Wall Street Journal did run the numbers, but as I was reading this article, I realized that this was a perfect article to support the purchase of LGI Homes, a home builder that I do own in my portfolio. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video. So guys, smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. You're watching more money, let's get it. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where the goal here is to help at least a thousand people achieve financial independence much sooner. And let's dive right into it. So you can see here that the Wall Street Journal just put out this article saying, is it better to rent or buy and what to do in a hot housing market. And essentially what they're trying to get at here is that with surging rent and home prices, it's worth doing the math again. And I think what they're trying to get across here is that in some cities, the break even time to buy is a lot longer due to the surge in home prices. And so moving into the article, they say here that the increased cost to buy a home means that the time it takes to break even compared with what one would pay to rent a comparable house has gotten longer. And so moving to the next slide here, you can see that cities like Honolulu, Hawaii, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Austin, Charlotte, the break-even time has increased by years. The one that I'm really not surprised with is Austin, Texas. That's becoming a new tech hub. And so you're getting a lot of high net worth, high income type people moving into the city and thus driving up the home prices. And so Austin, not a surprise at all. Prior to the pandemic, the typical home buyer would take 3.7 years to break even versus renting. Now it's closer to that six year time frame. Now, what I did want to point out to you guys is as I was reading this, I was sort of reading in between the lines here because look at the names highlighted below in red, in those red boxes. The names are Orlando, Phoenix, Dallas, Houston, Tucson, Arizona, and Miami. And the reason why I highlighted those names is that those are the places that people have been migrating to during the pandemic or subsequent to the pandemic. And what it's really showing here is that these areas have had the highest percentage increases in terms of home prices, but notice that their rent prices have also gone up significantly. And so the math still sort of remains relatively the same in these areas. So it still makes a lot of sense to buy homes in Orlando or in Arizona, or even in certain parts of Texas, like the Dallas Fort Worth area or Houston. And I'm sure San Antonio is somewhat in the same area as well. So that was a big surprise to me, but diving deeper into it, they provide this really great illustration where they're saying that the break even is between two and a half to three years and property is still relatively inexpensive compared to the major U.S. city centers if you're going to decide to move to Miami, Phoenix, or Arizona. Notice that I didn't highlight other cities like Boston or Chicago where you're seeing high levels of net worth grow after 10 years. And the reason why I didn't highlight those areas is because the price of the properties are so high or there's just a significant amount of property tax that you have to pay on those properties. For example, Chicago has some of the highest property tax in the country. But note that Texas also does have high levels of property tax, but they give it back to you from the perspective of lower income taxes. So there's a little bit of a tax fairness thing going on there. But what does this really mean here? Well, you're seeing a bit of a trend here with Florida, Texas, and Phoenix. It makes a lot of sense to still buy homes in these locations. And so if you're looking to purchase a home builder, LGI Homes is a really good builder because they're perfectly situated here because as you can see from here, they primarily focus on states such as Texas, Arizona, and Florida. Those are the three major ones that they focus on. And so this article to me ended up becoming a bull case for purchasing LGI home. Now, just getting into the valuation for LGI homes just a little bit, you can see here that here's my valuation for LGI homes that you can get in the tracker that the Patreons get access to. I'm valuing the company at approximately $190 per share. But note, I'm actually giving the company zero credit for excess capital for conservative purposes. In fact, the company, in my opinion, has around $11 or $12 of excess capital. So the valuation could reasonably be over $200 per share, just around that 201 or $202 per share. So effectively, it would say that the price to intrinsic value is much less than 50%. Or you can say that the current share price is trading at 5.8 times my fiscal year 2022 EPS estimate. And my 2022 EPS estimate for LGI Homes is below what the market believes. So the market actually believes that the multiple for this name is much lower than what I do. But that being said, $98 per share is not as exciting to me in this environment because the premiums 
on the cash secured puts are still pretty high. And so I'll just point one out for you. So you can see here, the December 16, 2022 cash secured puts with patience, you may get lucky and sell that $65 cash secured put for $5.50 per share. Right now it's out of the range. You see how the range is between 1.2 and 5.10. And the last trade was around 4.2. But with patience and a little bit of a downturn, you probably could get that. And so if you could get that, it would reflect an annual annualized yield of 15.3% and a net purchase price of $59.50 per share if you're exercised, which is a forward PE ratio of 3.5 times. So instead of paying $98 per share for LGI homes, you could enter into a CSP where you could have a win-win situation where worst case scenario, you make a 15% return on the security or just to park that capital. And best case scenario, you're buying this great home builder for three and a half times forward earnings. And that's sort of the math that I've been doing when I've been buying up these home builders. Now, I just want to sh quickly show you something. One thing that the Patreons get access to is this cash secured put analysis tool. So you can see here that we put in the strike date, we put in the price put amount of $65, we put in the premium of $550, and it gave you a net purchase price of $59.50, a straight put yield of 8 0.5%, but an annualized put yield of 15.3. So it's important to delineate between those two figures. And you can see that it gives you a forward PE ratio of 3.5 times earnings. Now, the other thing that the Patreons do get access to, just as an FYI, is this full model for LGI homes. So you can see here that I've broken out all of their key performance indicators, including their backlog data, how their debt looks, where are they generating their revenues from, like what locations, cities, areas, what the cost structure is, et cetera, et cetera. And so I forecast all of that out in the most granular data. And what you can do by being a part of the Patreon is you can actually download that model and change around those estimates at the most granular level to see what valuation works for you. And of course, you can get access to all of that at the $5 a month Patreon level. And like I always say, there's never any risk to you because if you decide to join and within the first month you think that it's not for you, no problem, just message me in the Patreon and I'll completely refund that first month. So once again, no risk to you. Now this weekend, I'm actually gonna release a new video called Are We On The Path? to a mortgage crisis. And in order for you to not miss out on that video, I highly encourage you to hit that red subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when that video comes out. And it looks like China is about to end their lockdowns, which is really good news for Alibaba. And I recently put out a video on that, which you can get to right here.